Okay, right. So, Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Apa khabar semua? Ibu Rinda, okay Ibu Rinda? I'm good. Very good. How about you, Dr. Zaki? They can't hear. Is it no problem with the mind? <laughs> Wait, yeah, let me check. My voice is clear. Okay. Are you okay, Gorinda? Are you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay, okay, right. So, without further ado, let's me. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Uh, wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafil anbiya wa mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. So, on behalf of the uh, UITM, uh, I would like to uh, thank the guest lecture so that um, today um, before we go further let we start our uh, guest session guest uh, lecture today by Umur Kitab Al-Fatiha Amin Ya Rabbal Alamin Okay right so um let us start our brief uh, introductions about our speaker today. So, uh, our guest lecture is Rinda Nuriswari. Uh, Madam Rinda uh, graduated bachelor and master degree uh, from Institute Technology 10 uh, November uh, in statistics. Uh, the field. So, most of the um, research and academic work related to that particular uh, specializations on the statistics so uh, i think uh, let me brief on that part so uh, burinda will continue all the details about the achievement and the academic uh, uh, achievement and uh, without further ado uh, we welcome our madam uh, rinda Norris. Uh, worry. So please, Mender uh, Burinda. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Zaki, for the nice introductions. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Zaki, and all his students in this uh, event. Uh, my name is Rinda Nariswari. As Dr. Zaki said, I'm a statistic lecturer uh, now in Bina Nusantara University, Jakarta, and. In this time, I'm currently a doctoral student also in Institute Technology for November. So I hope I can finish this uh, study as soon as possible. Amin. <laughs> okay, right, right. Okay. Can we start? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, in this time, I will explain uh, detail about probability, but I... Uh, sure that all of you is know what is probability and uh, what is the application but i will try explain another side about probability uh, i will share my screen first this way Is it okay? Can you see my presentation? Is it clear? Okay, Dr. Zaki, can you see my presentation? Okay. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, yes. So, in this uh, afternoon, I will bring material about introduction to probability in today, in this day, Tuesday, uh, 18 October 2022. This is me and this is uh, Dr. Zaki. We are a good friend, I think. <laughs> so let me start. Uh, what are the topic I will bring in this session? The first is sample space and events, uh, definitions and the example maybe. And next one, the probability of event and conditional probability. And we, when we have uh, more time, I will explain uh, the detail about Bayes theorem. This is a uh, what is a 
explanation or more detail about conditional probability. So in the definition, probability as numerical measure of the likelihood uh, that an event will occur. We use probability to define uh, measurement, uh, the what is possibility the event will occur. Probability values are always assigned on a scale from 0 to 1. From this statement, we know that there is no negative value of probability and there is never uh, more than one a value for probability. So when you have or, or you find the probability with zero value is possible and when you find the probability with one value is also possible. A probability near zero indicates an event is very unlikely to occur. This is a more impossible to have an event with probability uh, near zero. Uh, in the opposite, a probability near one indicates an event is almost certain to occur. We have a high possibility when we find the uh, probability with value near one. A probability of 0 0.5 indicates the occurrence of the event is just as likely. So we have uh, the condition 50-50 we called, yeah? So when the students uh, calculate and find the probability is 0 0.5, it, uh, it means that, yeah, we have the same possible yes uh, for example if we have two uh, outcomes yes or no so it is a uh, 50 percent for no and 50 percent for yes this value uh, always uh, or usual use when we didn't have uh, what is uh, any information about something so we use uh, value 0 0.5 in uh, describe how the possibility for the event. This is, you can see that the probability value is from 0 to 1. And when we have the probability is 0 0.5, this is a 50-50 condition. So there is no negative value for probability and there is no more than 1 for probability. Of in the definition, probability as a numerical measure of the likelihood of occurrence. So, what is sample space and what in events? What is uh, events? When we talk about probability, these two components are the main uh, uh, important things. We have to define the sample space and we have to define the event. So, next we can calculate the probability value. So in the first thing, you have to define the sample space. What is sample space and what is events? We can, we will discuss in this uh, session. An experiment is any processes that generate generates well defined outcomes. So, uh, sample space is uh, for an experiment is the set of all experimental outcomes. When you have an uh, experiment, you can define the all possible outcome to sample space. So we always uh, write this into function, define the sample space of experiment. And in this uh, sample space, we have uh, a sample point. For example, uh, the definition of sample point is element of the sample space. So each of element in sample space, we call that sample point. This is for example, you know, uh, this is from the book uh what is i i forget uh the title but i remember the author this is a uh, david anderson if you have this book you can go to this book and write the tale and read the tale uh, in this book uh in this example bradley investment uh bradley has invest into stocks mark oil and collins mining so the Bradley uh, have two option in this invest infestation investment, Markley Oil and Colin Mining. Bradley has determined that the possible outcome of this investment three months from now are as follows. You can see from the table, this is uh, gain or loss in three months. If you find the negative value, it means loss. And when you find the positive value, it means gains. Okay. So this is the two option investment of Bradley, Mark Oil and Colleen Mining. So this is gain to, uh, sorry, it is gain $100 and $500. Uh, 
uh, then there is no gain or no loss. And when uh, the four experiment or four observation, there is a loss to $20,000. Uh, and Colin Mining, uh, this is 800 uh, gain and loss $200 in mining. Okay, this is, we call, this is a sample space and uh, each of value we call the sample point. You can write uh, this outcomes to the function, into the function we call uh, that a sample space. So, for example, sorry, if we divide this is, we can write 10, then we, cry, we can write 5, then we can write 0, minus 20, then 8, and then minus 2. If we have write into the function, so we call this a sample space, and each of value, this is a sample point. Okay, so the first thing, when we decide, when we discuss the probability, we have to uh, divide what is the sample space and what are the sample point. Okay. So uh, there is uh, some ways. There are some ways to divide uh, how many the sample point when we have a sample space. We can use. Uh, the first one is a uh, counting rule. So counting rule is the one of way to define what is the or how many the sample point we have. If an experiment consists of sequence of k steps in which there are n one possible result for the first step, and we have n two possible result for the second step, and so on, then the total number of experimental outcomes is given by n1 multiplied by n2 multiplied by nk. So we have uh, we can use this formula to define uh, how many outcomes we have when we did uh, some experimental design. And when you see a uh, difficultness and uh, to define the experimental outcomes, you can see the three diagram. This is a visual. Yeah, by visual, you can define, for example, use counting rule. Uh, we have uh, four possible outcome in Markley oil, and we have uh, what is uh, two outcomes in mining. So we have total number of experimental outcome is N1 multiplied by N2. We have eight possible outcomes. How is it? Oh, sorry. How about we have uh, we use three diagram to define all possible outcomes. For example, okay, we have gain ten, we have gain five, and this is draw yeah uh, zero, and we lose ten. Then we from this uh, outcome we divided in gain eight and lose two. So we have uh, what is fair about outcomes to 10 and eight, 10, eight. So we gained $1,800. And this is when we have uh, gained $10, $10,000 and we lose $2,000. We have a pair of, of, of outcome, 10 and minus two. So we only gain uh, 800, $8,000, uh, sorry. And this the two, the second outcomes, we gain five and we gain eight in the mining and lose two in the mining. And we did, we have uh, two pairs, five, eight and five and minus two. So in this outcome, we gain $13,000 and in this outcome, we gain only $3,000. And from the third uh, outcome, we have a zero value. Uh, sorry, I will come uh, I back to this slide. This is zero. So we gained eight and we lost eight. 
So we have to uh, pair, we have two pairs out of count 0 and 8 and 0 and minus 2. In this part, we gain uh, $8,000 and in this uh, outcomes, we lose because minus 2, mining loss, $2,000. And the fourth outcome, loss $20,000 uh, and in the mining, we gain 8 and we lose 2. So we have two pairs, minus 20 and 8 and minus 20 and minus 2. Two. So in this outcome, we lose uh, twelve thousand dollar, and in this outcomes, in the last outcomes, we lose twenty two thousand dollar. So this is we call the outcomes or uh, possible outcomes for this experiment. We have to pair each out uh, each of outcomes from oil and the mining. Okay. So we, we can calculate how much uh, Bradley have uh, from this uh, investment. Okay, the second one uh, is combinations. We can calculate the number of combination of n objects, second n at times. Uh, we use notation C and C and 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 this is a combination and factorial divided and factorial this is populations and this a sample or this is the greater one than this okay and factorial multiply and minus and factorial for example we have n factorial it is n multiplied by n minus 1 n minus 2 and so on okay uh, please take note that this and bigger one always uh, greater than this and okay when you have to value for example 10 and 2 for example we have 10 and we have 2 so you can define that this the greater one is bigger and okay this mm. is 10 and 2 so this value is will be and oops sorry i don't know how to use this i'm sorry because i'm not familiar with my bags okay this is will be oops sorry and it's okay smaller and okay okay and the third one is permutation. When the students ask me what is the difference with uh, between uh, combination and permutations, uh, many reference say that permutation have a sequence ya. Jadi uh, kalau misalkan ada urutan seperti itu, maka nanti biasanya kita akan menggunakan permutasi. Tapi jika urutan itu tidak dipertimbangkan, jadi not consider with the uh, sequence uh, what is the order we use the combinations so this is the third way to uh, calculate the possible outcomes use counting sorry permutations you can see that the formula of permutation is p and n and we use the formula n factorial divided by divided by n minus n factorial uh, this is have the same meaning with the previous explanation that and bigger n is greater than smaller n. Okay. So, uh, this is about how to define the sample space and event. Uh, remember that uh, before we calculate the probability value, you have to define first what is the sample space and what is your event because when we uh, talk about probability is always probability of an event so when you didn't decide or you didn't define what your event so you cannot calculate uh, your probability for example when i have a dice one dice and i toss one this is 
the experiment and I have to divide what is your event. Okay, my event is the event number is appear. Jadi hanya angka genap saja yang muncul. Misalkan seperti itu ya. Sehingga so you can calculate what is the probability of event number is appear. For example, okay. So uh, next one is how to assign or how to calculate the probability. We have three methods to calculate the probability. Uh, the first one is classical method. And the second one is relative frequency method. And the last one is a big subjective method. For the basic statistic, we always use this classical method to define the, the probability value. Classical method is assigning probability based on the assumption of equally likely outcome. So all the possible outcomes have uh, the same possibility to appear in this event. For example, when you toss a dice, all the what is all the number have a same possibility to appear. Jadi mau uh, mata dadu satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima dan enam, semua punya kesempatan yang sama untuk muncul ya menjadi sebuah outcomes. This is uh, called the classical method. The second one is relative frequency method. This is assigning probabilities based on experimentation or historical data. So the second one, when we uh, you decide to use the second one, you have the historical data. So based on the data, we can calculate the probability value. And the last one is subjective method. This is assigning probabilities based on the signer judgment. So this is we call the null probability. Yeah. It, it, uh, when we talk about a possibility, uh, there is two, uh, what is two kinds, uh, probability, using probability or non-probability. For example, when I already know well uh, one by one my students, I can divide all these students. Probability past my course is 0 0.9 because I know he has a uh, high intelligence in my class and this is a very smart in this class so uh, I can uh, say that his probability to pass my course is 0 0.9 and uh, the opposite when I know that my student is very low uh, uh, understanding about my course I can say that her, her probability to pass my course is only 0 0.1 this is yeah by judgment this is, uh, uh, for example, in for the third one. Okay, what is classical method and what is the example? If an experiment has a possible outcome, this method will assign a probability of one per n to each outcome. So this is I call that equally likely. All outcomes has same possibility to occur. For example, we have the experiment rolling a die, okay, or toss a coin. This is a common example in probability. And when we uh, define the experiment is rolling a die, we can define the sample space. The notation is S for semesta in Indonesia, ya. Mungkin teman-teman juga familiar. Or this is a sample space. Sample space is function is consists of one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, what is the probability? Probability is each sample point has one per six. Okay, yeah? chance of occurring. So, for the one, this is probability is this probability is satu per enam. Okay. 1 per 6, this is 1 per 6, 1 per 6, 1 per 6, 1 per 6, and 1 per 6. And when we uh, sum all probability of each uh, possible outcome, we have to find the number of what? Okay, for example, when we have super, okay. Jadi kalau misalkan dijumlahkan, seper 6, tambah seper 6, tambah seper 6, itu jumlahnya harus sama dengan 1. Okay. So the probability of sample space must be one. It should be one. Okay.
Next. The second example, when we use relative frequency method, as my previous explanation that when you use relative frequency method, you have to have uh, what is the historical data. You see, for example, Lucas would like to assign probability to the number of floor pollution it runs per day. Office records show the following frequency of daily rental for the last 40 days is follow, okay, in this table. Number of pollution rent, this is a number of day. So when uh, there is no Polish uh, rent, it uh, we what we recorded four days, and there are six days when we have one Polish rent, okay, and there is 80, 18 days with two Polish rent, and ten days with three, and two days with four Polish rent. So from this table, we can calculate the probability. For example, okay, total number of day, we can sum all the value and we found that the sum is 40. So this will be a sample space or we call the population, okay, the all uh, possible outcomes. And we can calculate the probability is 4 divided 40 and we got 0 0.1. And the second one is 6 divided 40, and we found that 0 0.15, y, okay. Okay, I don't know. Okay, and the third one is 18 divided by 14, 0 0.45. And the next is 0, sorry, 10 divided 14, we have 0 0.25, and the last one is 2 divided 40, and we have 0 0.05. And you see, if we sum of probability, it should be 1. This is uh, based on my previous explanation, yeah. This is a uh, color probability sample space, itu harus sama dengan 1. Okay, this is example how to calculate the probability using a relative frequency method. Okay, so uh, next one is probability of an event and conditional probability. In this section, I will discuss about uh, the relationship about probability of two events. For example, uh, many of experiment, uh, there is uh, not only one event, but we have two or more event in one experiment. So we have to uh, learn about the relationship of two event or more. For the first explanation of this section, you have to know uh, what is the definition of event. An event is a collection of sample points. So when you define the event, this is a collection about a sample point. The probability of any event is equal to the sum of the probability of the sample points in the event. If we can identify all the sample points of an experiment and assign a probability to each, we can compute the probability of an event. So. As I said before, that before you calculate the probability value, you have to define your event first. Okay. Uh, this is a same example, Bradley investment. We had previous example when we talk about uh, sample point with multiplication. I hope you remember that. So we can uh, divide the event and their probability. For example, we have uh, two event. Uh, we use notation M for Merkley oil profit table. And we the second event is C. This is a mining profit table. Okay, for M, we have, this is the, what is the, all possible outcomes, okay? 
so you can see that uh, the sample space is 10, 8, 10 minus 2, 5, 8, and 5 minus 2. So this is, I go to the preview slide. Okay, yeah, this is, yeah. This is the pair of 10 and 8, 10 and 2, 5 and 8, 5 and 2, minus 2, and minus 20 and 8, minus 20 and minus 2. Okay, and you see that, oh, I'm sorry, this is the profit, yeah, only the profit, okay? So, we take a look and the, to the positive value only, okay, I'm sorry, I have mistaken. So, this is, because uh, the event is profitable, only the profit, okay, yeah, okay, you can see it, only the profit. So when we have a sample space, when we have all possible outcomes, we only take a look to the positive value. So there is 10 and 5, and there is the 8 and minus 2, because the event is market oil profitable. So when we have an event, you only see the positive value, 10 and 5. So we have 10, 8, 10 minus 2, 5, 8, and 5 minus 2. Same thing with the oil or the mining profitable. Okay. We only have one positive value, 8. So we have 8, 10, 8, 5, 8, 0, and 8 minus 22. Okay. There is the probability, you see, from the outcomes 10 and 8, we have probability 0 0.2. From the outcome 10 and minus 2, there is probability 8.8, .8, sorry, 0 0.08. And the outcome 5 and 8, there is probability 0 0.16. And the outcomes 5 and minus 2, there is probability 0 0.2. To six. So we sum this and we got 0 0.7 from probability Marco oil profitable. With the sum way and some logic, we found that probability of calling mining profitable is 0 0.48. Okay. Okay. Next, there is uh, there are some basic relationship of probability. There are some probability uh, relationship that can be used to compute the probability of an event without knowledge of all the sample point probabilities. There are four relationship. The first one is complement of an event. The second one is union of two events. The third one is intersection of two events. And the last one is mutually exclusive event. We can discuss uh, this relationship one by one in next slide. Complement of an event defined of is defined, okay, complement of event A is defined to be the event consisting all of sample points that are not in A. By visual, you can see that when we have sample space in the square, Okay, square is sample space, and this is event A. So the A complement is all possible outcomes that uh, are not in A, outside of A. Okay, so if we have the event A, so the rest of or the outside of A, this is called the A complement. Okay, the complement of A is denoted by A. C gitu ya, jadi uh, C nya uh, small C di atas gitu ya, C nya kecil di atas. The Venn diagram below illustrate the concept of complement as I said. So you can, when you have to define the A complement, you can use the Venn diagram. This is example of complement. To event connect with experiment rolling a single die. So the experiment is rolling a single die. 
and we decide the event is the number role is event. We have two event in this experiment, E and T. E is for the number role is event and T for the number role is greater than two. So you have to find the complement of each. Please remember that from this experiment, we have two events, E and T. So when you have to find the complement of it, it means you have to find uh, two complement, E complement and T complement. We define the sample space from this experiment, rolling a single die is one, two, three, four, five, and six. And since we have two events, E and T, so we have to define first what is the sample point for event E and what is the sample for point for event T. The sample point of event E is 0, 4, and 6. Sorry, 2, 4, and 6. And for T, the event is number roll is greater than 2. So we have 3, 4, 5, and 6. So the complements for E, we write E complement 1, 3, and 5 outside the sample point. And the T complement is 1 and 2. There is the complement of an event. The complement of an event, we can define it by one by one. Uh, regarding for uh, what the event we have defined in the previous section, okay? The second relationship is union of two events. Ini kalau diartikan gabungan ya. Jadi, the union of events A and B is the event containing all sample points. Jadi, uh, semua yang ada di A dan semua yang ada di B itu akan menjadi anggota dari union A dan B. Itu ya. Event containing all sample points that are in A or B or both. So, when we have three example, when we have three events, so for example, I add one event in this. This is we call C, for example. So we can divide A union A union B union C is all sample point in A in B and in C. Okay. Because we define or we uh, discuss in this sections only two events, we use A and B. So the union of two events denote by A union B. Jadi ini seperti huruf U gitu ya. It's like letter U. Okay, the union of A and B, if you if you use fan diagram, you can see the illustration in this uh, figure. This example of union, the union of the events, as we discussed before, for Bradley investment, we have two events, M and C. M is for Markley oil profitable, and C is uh, for Colin mining profitable. So when you have to divide the union of M, C, M, U, C, Markley oil profitable, or Colin's mining profitable. So unions also called, uh, uh, we can identify but by this, yeah. Jadi kalau misalkan di gabungan atau union itu ciri-ciri yang paling utama adalah kita menemukan kata or atau gitu ya. Jadi for example, what is the probability uh, the number or what is the probability your student pass your course? This is girl or boy. So we have to divide probability of girl who pass my course and probability uh, the boy who passed my course, okay, because you we, we use or to define the union. M union C, this is the sample point. 
take a note that we only uh, talk about the profit. Okay. So we define the probability of M union C. This is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.08 plus 0 0.16 plus 0 0.26 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.02. We got 0 0.82. This is, we call the probability of union M or C. Okay. The second example, uh, when we have experiment of rolling a single die, find the union of the events E and T. Please remember that the event E is number roll is event atau genap gitu ya. Ini uh, based on the previous example. And T is the number roll is greater than 2. So we know the sample point of E, this is 2, 4, and 6. And sample point of T is 3, 4, 5, and 6. So when we combine the all sample point for Two, from two events, we got E union T is zero, sorry, is two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, we combine the sample point from E and from T. When we have the same sample point, for example, in E, we have four and six. In T, we uh, also have four and six. So when we write the union of E and T, you only write once. So don't duplicate this uh, sample point. Okay? So it will be wrong if you write 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 6. It's wrong. Okay? You only write once for the sample point. The third one, the relationship of two uh, events in probability, we have intersection of two events. Intersection of event A and B is the set all sample points that are only both on A and B. So when you see the Venn diagram, the intersection is only this area. Okay? Only this area because only the sample point that uh, both A and B. The intersection is denoted by A intersects B. Uh, ini seperti N ya teman-teman. Jadi kalau gampangnya di union itu biasanya kita menggunakan U. Kalau di intersection itu kita menggunakan N. Agar tidak terbalik-balik antara union dan intersection. Okay. This is the example. Bradley investment. Okay. Still the same example with the previous discussion. When we calculate the intersection of two events. And we have to find the probability of intersection. We have to define first what are the event. For example, event M and event C. We use the same events. Markley oil profitable and Colin mining profitable. And M intersect C. We, you see that the hint word is and. Okay. Please take a note that intersection and union is differ. Okay. When we talk about union, we use or, and when we talk about intersection, we use and. So, when you do uh, some exercises in uh, some books and found the word or, so you have to use union to calculate the probability. And um, when you found the word and, you have to use intersection to calculate the probability m intersect c this is there yeah, let's take a note there is the sample space okay this is sample space yeah so don't forget this so we can uh, define what is the union and what is the intersection okay 
And we can calculate the probability for M intersection is 0 0.36. Okay, is it clear? Is it clear? Okay, yeah, continue. Uh, the second example of intersection, we use the same event and same experiment with the previous explanation in the experiment of rolling a single die find the intersection e intersect c of the event e the number rolled is event and t the number rolled is greater than two so we know that our sample space is one two three four five and six and the outcome uh, of E is 2, 4, 6, and the T is 3, 4, 5, 6. So the sample, the same sample point is 4 and C. Okay, okay. Wait, I write this twice, so I have to delete first. So the intersection of E and T is 4 and 6. The next one is addition law. The addition law provides a way to compute the probability of event A or B or both A and B occur. For example, when we uh, define the A union B, we have know that a and B have intersection, so the union is probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of intersection A and B. Please take a note that uh, two events uh, didn't have intersection, this value is zero. Okay, this value will be zero. For example, when we have to calculate the probability of oil or mining profitable, we know that the probability of uh, mark oil is 0 0.7 and the Collins mining is 0 0.48. So we know that the intersection of M and C is 0 0.36. So since uh, these two events have intersection when we calculate the union probability of m union c is probability of m plus probability of c minus probability m intersect c so 0 0.7 plus 0 0.848 minus 0 0.36 we got 0 0.82 please remember probability is never more than one so when you have calculated the probability value and you got the number is greater greater than one please recheck your uh what is your uh, notes yeah Jadi, your calculation please recheck this result is the same Oke, okay, jadi hasilnya sama saja seperti yang sebelumnya ya. Tadi yang kita dapatkan untuk menghitung uh, union tidak menggunakan addition law, hasilnya adalah sama. The last one is mutually exclusive event. Jadi, two events are said to be mutually exclusive if the events have no sample point in common. Oke, okay, that is two event are mutually exclusive. If when one event occurs, the other cannot occur. For example, this A, okay, this A, uh, we call uh, event laki-laki, misalkan ya, male, and B for female. There is no intersection. Jadi, there is no sample point that could be male or female, okay? Jadi yang ada di lingkaran female, female sudah pasti female, yang ada di lingkaran male itu sudah pasti male. Jadi tidak akan ada satu sample point yang dia female dan juga male. Seperti itu ya teman-teman ya. Atau uh, 
when we'll talk about the semester of students, the uh, fifth semester, the student in five semester, there is uh, will be no in seventh semester. Uh, addition law for mutually exclusive events. We know that there is no intersection of two events in mutually exclusive. So when we calculate the probability A union B, we only have probability of A plus probability of B because probability of A intersects B always zero. Okay, what is the conditional probability? Probability of event given that another event has occurred is called conditional probability. So when we talk about conditional probability, we have uh, two events. And one event is as a conditional for the other. Conditional probability of A given B is denoted by P A slash what is ini ya, jadi garis lurus gitu ya, B. How to calculate the conditional probability A given B? Probability A given B is probability A intersect B divided probability B. For this formula, we know that we have to calculate the probability of A given B. Okay, given B. This is, for example, a conditional probability from Bradley investment. Calculate a probability of Colin mining profitable given Markley oil profitable. So we write PC conditional M, PC intersect M divided PM. We know that the intersection of C and M is 0 0.36 and the probability of uh, marked oil profitable is 0. 7. So we found that probability of C given M is 0 0.51. This is we call the conditional probability. The next one is multiplication. Multiplication law provides a way to compute the probability of intersection of two events. So from this formula, this is Ini ya, jadi yang multiplication law itu sebenarnya dia berasal dari conditional probability. Kalau conditional probability itu kita menghitung probability A jika diketahui B, sedangkan kalau yang multiplication law ini kita akan menghitung probability intersection-nya. A intersection B is probability of B multiplied probability A given B. Jadi, conditional probability itu bisa digunakan untuk menghitung dua ya, tekan-tekan. Bisa, uh, you can use this formula to compute the conditional probability and you can use the conditional probability to calculate intersection probability. Okay, this is the example. Uh, we will use multiplication law. So, we know that we have to event oil uh, profitable and mining profitable. We know that PM is 0 0.7 and in, uh, conditional probability of C and M is 0 0.51. So when you have to calculate the probability M intersects C, you can use the formula PM multiplied PMC. Okay, we found the probability M intersects C is 0 0.36. This result is same with the previous uh, discussion. Okay. Sehingga, to, so to calculate the intersection, there are uh, some ways okay, to get the value. You can use the intersection. You can find, you have to find first what are the sample point of M and C and uh, get the intersects of these two event or you can use multiplication law to get the intersection probability of intersection of the events yeah uh, if the result is correct the result uh, will be same use the first way or the last way
Okay. Uh, next one, we talk about independent event. What is independent event? Event A and B are independent if only if. Probability A given B, same with probability of A. Okay. This uh, example to prove. Are M and C independent? You can see, you can use this formula. Probability of A given B should be same with probability of A. Okay, we have to event M and C. M from oil, uh, M for oil uh, profitable and C for coal mining profitable. Probability M intersect C is probability. PM multiplied PC. Multiply by PC, okay? We know that probability M intersect C is 0 0.36. And we got the probability of N is 0 0.7. Probability of C is 0 0.48. But please take a look that probability M multiplied by probability C 0 0.7 multiplied by 0 uh, 0.48 is 0 0.34 because 0 0.36 not same okay yeah. Plus probability intersection m and c 0 0.36 probability of n multiply probability of c is 0 0.34 okay because there is not equal 0 0.34 not equal 0 0.36 so we conclude that m and c are not independent okay so uh, maybe there is a uh, intersection in these two events or another reason okay is it clear is it easy to understand about what are we talking? Okay. Uh, this is a conditional, uh, sorry, supporting material, yeah. To so only support this uh, topic about bias theorem. We know that when we talk about conditional probability, we only talking about uh, two events, A and B. So how if we have two uh, more than two events and we want to calculate the conditional probability. So if you have uh, more than two events and you want to know the their conditional probability, you can see you can use a bias theorem. Okay. Bias theorem uh, of the initial we began with initial or prior probabilities. Then, from a sample, special report, or product test, we obtain some additional information. Given this information, we calculate revised or posterior probabilities. Bias theorem provides the means for revising the prior probabilities. For example, this is the chart, yeah, uh, bias theorem mechanism, prior probabilities for new information. And we apply the bias theorem and we will get the posterior probabilities. Okay. The okay for illustration bias theorem. If we have only two, only two event, put in here, A and B, for example, yeah. Nah. If we have two event and they are mutually exclusive because there is no intersection, we cannot calculate the conditional probability. And uh, how if we have uh, more than two events? For example, this yeah, this is uh, my course. For example, statistic, and this is the student from class class A. This is the students from class B. This is the student from class C and so on until class K, for example. Okay, this is class A. This is B. 
This is class C until K class. And the event and the circle one, the black one circle, is past statistic course. So the student who passed statistic course can from the class A, can from the class B, can from the class C, and so on. If we have two uh, or more in a conditional uh, event, we use bias theorem. Okay. If you only want event as a conditional event, you use conditional probability. For example, yeah, we use the three diagram for the example uh, bias theorem. This is the uh, information about the example. The planning board has recommended against the zoning change. Yeah, you can read uh, the example. I will send this slide to Dr. Zaki so you can read by yourself about the bias theorem. Okay. And the formula of bias theorem is PAJ. What is, oh, sorry, PAE. We have E, yeah. We have E, oh, sorry, we have AI event. Probability of A. I given B is probability of AI multiplied by probability of B given AI and divided this. Okay. Bayes theorem is applicable when the events for which we want to compute posterior probability are mutually exclusive and their union is the entire sample space. Okay. Okay, I think it's uh, enough, Dr. Zaki from uh, this event. Okay, please, if you have any questions, you can ask directly to me. Okay, right. So thank you, uh, Burinda. Uh, now, if uh you guys have any questions uh come across with this uh session uh i think burinda ready to uh open the floor any questions regarding your presentation just now okay right so adeka if you have any questions so you can ask uh, burinda but uh if uh, they wanted to get uh, uh, contact with you, Burinda. Uh, is there any uh, corresponding uh, emails or anything that we can uh, connect with you? Okay. Uh, are we Do you right? have any details? Yeah, yeah. Do you have any details that wanted to share? My email, yeah? Yeah, sure. Okay. You can contact me by email for sure. Okay, right. I uh, will write in this. Okay. okay. Is it clear? Right. So maybe you can uh, open up it. Okay, never mind, it's okay. So I think uh, there are a lot of uh, information and then uh, knowledge that we have uh, uh, gained uh, this afternoon. So uh, let them digest and then uh, we will have another session with our um, uh, class uh, okay. next tomorrow. So hopefully that this will be give a uh, preful um, event uh, which they will they will uh, apply all this kind of knowledge. So once again, uh, nothing else to say. Uh, thank you so much for having this session with us. So hopefully thank that we you. will uh, work together again. So thank okay. you so much, Gorinda.
Thank you, Dr. Zaki, for this opportunity. I hope we have another session in this another yeah. day. Okay? Yeah, sure, sure. So okay. see you again when you are see you. So, <laughs> thank you. Okay. Good afternoon. Bye. Bye. Oh yeah, one more. Oh. Uh, can we have uh, photo sessions? Uh, oh, everybody, sure. boleh tak? Boleh tak? Boleh tak? Buka. Uh, open up your cameras, kerja. Uh, let's. Uh, we have one such uh, photo sessions. Yes, boleh tak? Tak nampak lah. Buka lah kamera, boleh? Okay, we try to get uh, one or two uh, snaps. Semua orang malu lah Bu Rinda. <laughs> or basi with other. Oh, this is... Ah, wait, wait. Uh, we're waiting for three. Uh, sekejap, kita tunggu. Ada ke lagi yang nak buka kamera? Come on. Come on guys, sporting sikit. Cik Borinda jauh ni. Share the knowledge. Uh, jauh di seberang Jakarta. Okay, buka. Boleh ke? Yeah. Okay, right. So, one, two, three. Okay, right. One more. Uh... Yeah, Burinda. One, two. Okay, right. One, two. Okay, okay. Boleh juga. <laughs> All right. Ramai di sana. Right. So one. Okay. Once again. One, two, three. Yes. There you go. Okay, right. So once again, thank you, Burinda, for the uh, cooperation and knowledge sharing. Yeah. So thank okay. you so much. Anything will okay, update okay. you. Oh, thank you. Okay, bye bye. bye. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Terima kasih, Dr. Zakia. Yeah, yeah, yeah.